Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle and welcome finally to the next installment of my Paper Transform series. I know it's been, oh god, I don't know, four and a half months or something ridiculous like that. And I apologize. I did not mean for it to um, take that long to make another video, but my kids were home for the summer, uh, you know, for school and um, I don't think there was a moment when one or both of them wasn't here and it's so hard to make a video especially when you know a tutorial type video with them running around and yelling and and then just as soon as the summer was ending I thought you know I'd be able to get back to this and Hurricane Irene hit and trashed our basement as you know a lot of you already know and we're still seven weeks later in the process of getting things put back together. We had to do the unfinished part first because that was the easiest and now we're working on the finished part. We got my son's section all done and had to buy a new TV stand and now we're trying to salvage my ugly Brady Bunch furniture and everything down there is taken apart and all over the place and it's a wreck. Um, but I did manage to find everything that I needed for this week's um, technique. And from now on, I am going to try my hardest to uh, do this on a more regular basis. So today we're going to work on page 24. This is uh, watercolor masking techniques. And most of you are familiar with masking. Um, you, know, you can either mask with, there's special tape that releases from the paper really easily. Um, there are all kinds of uh, masks you can use like Tim Holtz masks that you know have a little bit of tackiness that stick to the paper and you can paint or spray around them but today we're gonna focus on um, art masking fluid and I've never used this stuff before and this was the type that my Michaels carries the Windsor and Newton watercolor and it's very similar to rubber cement in fact you can also use rubber cement for this technique. It's just this does not have um, as much of a smell to it as rubber cement does. And what you want to do when you first get it, right before you use it, is you want to shake it well. Mine has a yellowish cast to it. There are others that have a bluish tint to them. But when you let this particular brand settle, um, you can see a yellow, really yellow cast on the bottom. So you have to shake that up really really well and besides the masking fluid you are going to need um, watercolor paper watercolor paint or any type of water-based spray um, for today's technique I use my peerless watercolors which I've showed in previous videos and I'm also using some of the Adirondack color washes just because I have a ton of these from um, the Ranger sale a couple weeks ago. But you can use your Starburst stains, you know, any of your Lindy's products, Glimmer Mist, Perfect Pearls Mist. You um, can even use your reinkers and mix them with water and use those. Uh, the possibilities are pretty much endless. The artist tape and the artboard, I don't use, I don't tape my paper down <clears throat> to any type of artboard, I just wing it. And then you need a um, medium round watercolor brush. But for this technique, I needed, um, I'm just using one of my daughter's cheap little watercolor brushes. And I'm also using a cheap brush that is specifically just for the masking fluid. Because the masking fluid is going to gunk um, your brushes up a little. So make sure that you, uh, you use a cheap brush for that. So the basic technique says that you are supposed to, like in this example, um, the artist just painted this design on the watercolor paper with the masking fluid, let it dry, and then she did a, a multicolor wash over it with watercolors. And after you let that dry, you can either use an eraser or you can just use your finger and rub the masking fluid and it comes right off. And then what you get underneath is just that raw white paper. 
it's kind of it's very similar to a resist a resist technique. It's just that you're going to end up with the raw paper underneath instead of you know an embossed um, raised image. So I didn't like the look of just the white paper. So for the first one that I did, I sprayed my watercolor paper with some of this lettuce Adirondack color wash. Let it dry. You can speed it up with your heat gun. And then I just painted this leaf design, as you can tell I'm no artist, uh, with the masking fluid. Let it dry. And you can dry the masking fluid with um, a heat gun. It does dry pretty quickly, but you can speed it up with a heat gun. And um, then I sprayed over top of that with some of the denim color wash. And after that was dry, I just rubbed off the masking fluid, and that's what I ended up with. So I'm going to show you a similar technique, um, or similar example, in just a minute. I wanted to just show you the other examples, the more intricate ones I made with some of the masking fluid. This is kind of a plaid design that I made. I first sprayed the paper again with the lettuce, let it dry. Uh, then I painted these wide lines with this brush with the masking fluid. Once that was dry, I sprayed over it with the wild plum. When that was dry, I did not take this masking fluid off. I left that there. And then I drew in or painted in these thinner lines with some more masking fluid. And when that was dry, I sprayed it one last time with eggplant. And when the eggplant color wash was dry, then I rubbed all the masking fluid off. And this is the pattern that I came out with. So I'm going to show you how to do that step by step in just a minute. And my final example, which is my personal favorite, is um, using stamps with the masking fluid. Uh, if you use stamps with masking fluid, just make sure you use a stamp that doesn't have any kind of um, you know, real detailed image. You want to use one that's um, pretty solid because you have to get a lot of the masking fluid on the stamp. And if it's a detailed image, it's just going to gunk it up and you're not going to be able to see what you actually stamped. So what I did here was I just colored the paper, the white watercolor paper, with a variety of different colors of my peerless watercolors. Let it dry and then I've got these Maya Road foam stamps. Put the masking fluid on those, stamped over the paper, let it dry and then I did a color wash over the whole piece of watercolor paper with a blue color. And when that dried then I rubbed all the masking fluid off. And um, as you can see, some images came out better than others. It depends how much masking fluid you have on your stamp, how hard you press. This one I pressed a little too hard. It got a little muddy around the edges. This one came out pretty clean. This one, obviously, I didn't have enough masking fluid on in the middle. And there was an image here, but I didn't have enough masking fluid on it. And I pressed down too hard on it. That's the other thing. Don't press down really hard with your stamp when you have masking fluid on it because then it tends to also get stuck to the paper. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you an example like this. So I got my little box here to spray and I'm going to color this paper with some wild plum. Now you can just let it air dry if you want but I wanted the color to be um, a little lighter than what it looks like here, so I just blotted with a paper towel. And oh, I have to tell you a funny story about the paper towels. I bought these the other day. I usually buy Viva, the plain white Viva paper towels, but my grocery store didn't have any the other day. So I bought two rolls of this bounty that had all these printed decorations on it. And you know you're addicted to crafting when 
your your child comes home from school, my 15 year old came home from school, he saw these on the paper towel roll and he looked at me and he goes, are you kidding? And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, mom, you actually decorated the paper towel roll? He thought I had stamped the entire paper towel roll. I could not even believe it. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a heat gun really quick. Okay, and now I'm going to get my masking fluid, shake it up just a little bit, and I'm just going to paint a simple like heart design. Whoops. Sorry, that was my phone. Paint a simple heart design on the middle of this paper. Like I said, I'm not much of an artist, so. And try not to go over your lines too much because like I said, this does dry fast. And I'm just going to stick this in this water here. I have water over here so that I it doesn't dry on the brush. And oh, the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to paint some polka dots. So I have this eraser. And when you paint anything, masking fluid on something, you just kind of want to pounce it on there. And then stamp it on. You want to make sure you have good coverage. And of course now my battery is running out. So I'm going to do this example. And then I'm going to come back and do a part two and show you examples of the plaid and the stamped images. Okay, that should do it. And then the other thing you want to make sure you do is get this masking fluid off your stamps or whatever surface that you put them on as quick as you can once you're done stamping or painting with it. So I'm going to hit this with a heat gun really quick. That looks pretty dry. I get my box and I'm going to spray it with the denim. Maybe some of the denim and some of the purple. I get some of the eggplant. And blot it with my paper towel. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more blue on there. There we go. And I'm going to again hit this with my heat gun. Now I'm going to rub the masking fluid off just with my finger and you'll see that wild plum color come through. And there you go. Okay, so I'm going to switch batteries and I'm going to be right back to show you um, the plaid technique and the flower, the stamped flower technique. So thanks for watching everyone and stay tuned for part two. Bye.